Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you here this morning. Um, this morning, we will begin with the Liturgy of the Palms. Those of you who would like to walk with us, we're going to just walk a little block outside after we bless the palms and hand them out. Um, those of you who want to stay here, we will rejoin you and uh, say the opening collect. Once we say that collect, then the music will start and we'll start with a regular slate of the day. Maybe something a little different that you haven't done before, I don't know, is the Passion Gospel is at the very end of the service today. And there are reasons for that because we never get to preach on uh, the Palm Sunday Gospel when we put the Passion Gospel because it plays such a prominent, ro prominent role. We'll be leaving in silence today because of that. So um, as we end, there will be no postlude, no closing hymn, nothing like that. So we will begin. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord, God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were following shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. as far as we dare go without losing Wi-Fi access. So this is a short procession.
united to glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may, we, we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. I who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read our response from Psalm 31 together. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction. My bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of my enemies and from those who persecute me. May your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. Our next reading is from the epistle from Philippines. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human kindness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue should confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Please be seated. Palm Sunday, a day of hail and hosanna and celebration. And what a celebration it seems like today, especially as we hear a full resounding response to our call and response places and also with you to uh, walking down the way to being together again in a new and different way but still worshiping together and what a nice thing it is to be gathered here and to be gathered online Hopefully you've been able to get just a little bit of the difference that it's been like for a whole year in the responses, in the being together, in the way it feels to come together into worship. It makes me think a lot about posture, our posture in worship. We start out today with the walk, the walk that we made around the block as we got greetings from other people on the way, and as we saw some people withdraw and be a little bit suspicious, there were both of those postures out there, and that's the absurdity of this day, because nobody really understood it even when it was happening. It was just a little bit absurd in the posture, in the welcoming of Jesus, as fully as they did into Jerusalem. And it was a symbol to Rome that this was a person to be reckoned with. And so as we go through this week, we might even think more about posture. We've been through a year where we haven't been able to really kneel because we've been online. And so when it's been at those places in the rubrics, we've just kind of gone on camera and continued on with the service, but you haven't been able to see the posture of kneeling. Or you haven't been able to see the posture of how we process the gospel. We can't even do it right now to process it into the midst because that puts me too close to all of you. So it's a short procession right now just to the front. All of these postures, these things that we use in our service that have been kind of taken away from us, or at least that's the way it feels. But I think of the posture of this whole week that we have to go through. We have so much posture to go through in this story. So many different things. From this day with people kneeling and putting their cloaks down and saying hail and hosanna to Monday, Thursday, where we're reclined at table and sharing a meal together and maybe even washing each other's feet. Or maybe Good Friday, maybe we should be just right on the ground because of loss, because of Jesus praying in the garden and sweating those big tears that become blood. Maybe we should just lay right down to Easter Vigil. We're in the dark, in the quiet, in the places of fear, just like some people have passed through fear this week. In those places that we fear the most and we start out in that dark, and that candle is lit. Because even in those places of fear, there are people who help. There are people who are lights in that darkness. There are people who shine forth with what it means to love the human family. And in the midst of that service, all of a sudden, the organ comes up, the lights come up. Our posture is again up and reborn and full. 
And yet some of the posture of this week is in this first hymn of the church, this Philippians hymn that we heard today, where Christ did not regard equality as, with God as something to be lorded over everyone else. Boy, that's a hard one. We'd like to be important. We'd like to know our value. We'd like to feel esteemed. We like to be praised. It's part of the human condition. We all need to know that we're accepted. Becoming fully empty. What does that mean? What posture would that take? Would it mean that we wouldn't rush into the places where we think we have the answers? We know it because we can be recognized in the end, right? Maybe it's not in offering the solution, but in heavy listening, as we've discovered in this from many one curriculum that we've gone through. The power and revolution of listening to a story of humbling ourselves that much because as we've gone through this gospel story of Jesus we're with a woman at the well that no one should have been talking to because she was there at midday because she was sinful because she did things that were wrong and yet Jesus was there listening despite she was a woman despite she was a Samaritan, despite all the labels that anybody could put on her. It's the same with a man born blind. He's a sinner. Or his parents sinned, right, Jesus? That's how the story goes. The labels we put on one another that we just so conveniently do mean that we're not emptied yet because we'd like to just put those right on each other. You're a liberal, you're a Republican, you're against this, you're for that. It makes it so convenient and easy. And yet emptying ourselves calls us to that listening space, calls us to that posture of kneeling and being a servant of all of emptying ourselves of every preconception that we have so we might hear and might hear the one that calls us the one that calls us to be that light for the world the one that calls us to be the servant of all the one that calls us to humble ourselves that much so at the name of jesus every knee shall bow every tongue confess him and all of it's because we walk that way we walk that way of the cross we posture ourselves in that way of being a servant we give ourselves up and it's the hardest walk we ever have to make. So pick up your cross and follow. Amen. Let us stand together and affirm our faith. Do you believe in God? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now pray the prayers of the people. After each bidding, the people may offer their own prayers, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Dion, for our priest Annette, and for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. St. James, Brown Chapel. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Curtis. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for those who are sick, suffering, or lost. For Janet. Yes, especially Larry and Hogan, Bruce Mims, Barbara Minch, Julie Wittenburn, Sikorsky, Elaine Jackson, are there others? I ask your thanksgiving for the beauty of creation. For the flowers and the trees. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those known to us, Fred Frisbee, Kristen Fraser, Janet Graham Wittenburn. Are there others? Lynn's brother. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray in the way Christ taught us. Our 
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine. We long for the day when you will once again refresh us with the cup of salvation in the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. We long for the day when we may once again partake of the bread of life, the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one love, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your Son. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You have blessed this earth to bring forth food, to satisfy our hunger. Let this food strengthen us in the Eucharistic fast that is before us, that following our Savior in the way of the cross, we may come to the joy of his resurrection. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. God of all creation, we gather on this first day of the week made holy by the resurrection of Christ your Son. In the waters of baptism we were buried with him, so that we might also rise with him and show, so share his victory over sin and death. You have transformed our lives into the living stones that form your church with Christ as the foundation stone. Strengthen our community's bond of communion and peace and deepen our solidarity with your church throughout the world. Rekindle within us this Sabbath day the vision of your kingdom so that our daily concerns and labor may find their prop proper perspective. Fill our homes with the spirit of the gospel and give us the grace to see the face of Christ in the people with whom we live. We raise our voices in praise and thanksgiving to you, O God, that we who have celebrated Christ's resurrection this day Share in his eternal glory, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Peace. <laughs>
Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Paul. When they reached a place called Gethsemane, he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter and James and John with him. Horror and dismay came over him, and he said to them, My heart is ready to break with grief. Stop here and stay away. Then he went forward a little, threw himself on the ground, and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass by him. Father, Father, all things are possible to thee. Take this cup away from me, yet not what I will. He came back and found them asleep, and he said to Peter, Asleep, Simon, be not able to stay awake for what happened. Stay awake. All of you are afraid that you may be spared to the truth. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed. On his return, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know how to answer him. The third time he came and said to them, Still sleeping, still taking your ease, do not. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed to sinful men. Up, let us go to Father. My betrayer is the final. Suddenly, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared, and with him was a crowd armed with swords and cudgels sent by the chief priests, lawyers, and elders. Now the traitor had agreed with them upon a signal. The one I kiss is your man. Seize him and get him safely away. When he reached the spot, he stepped forward at once and said to Jesus, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they seized him and held him fast. One of the party drew his sword and struck at the high priest's servant cutting off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Do you take me for a friend? If you have come out with swords and cudgels to arrest me. Day after day I was within your reach as I taught in the temple. And you did not lay my hand, lay hand on me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. Then the disciples all deserted him and ran away. Among those following was a young man with nothing but a linen cloth. They tried to seize him, but he slipped out of the linen cloth and ran away naked. Then they led Jesus away to the high priest's house, where the chief priests, elders, and doctors of the law were all assembled. Peter followed him at a distance right into the high priest's courtyard, and there he remained sitting among the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find some evidence against Jesus to warrant a death sentence, but failed to find him. Many gave false evidence against him, but their statements did not tally. Some stood up and gave false evidence against him to this effect. And I will go around this temple, made with human hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their evidence did not agree. Then the high priest stood up in his place and questioned Jesus. Have you no answer to the charges that these witnesses bring against you? But he kept silence. He made no reply. Again, the high priest questioned him. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see. You will see the Son of Man 
seated at the right hand of God in the company of the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, Need we call further witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? Their judgment was unanimous, that he was guilty and should be put to death. Some began to spit on him, blindfolded him, and struck him with their fists, crying out, oh, And the high priest men set upon him with blows. Meanwhile, Peter was still below in the courtyard. One of the high priest's servant maids came by and saw him there, warming himself. She looked into his face and said, You were there too, but this man from Nazareth speaks to you. I know nothing. I do not understand what you mean. Then he went outside into the porch, and the maid saw him there again and began to say to the bystanders, He is one of them. And again he denied it. Again, a little later, the bystander said to Peter, Surely you are one of them. You must be. You are a Galilean. At this, he broke out into curses, and with an oath he said, I do not know this man you speak of. Then the call grew a second time, and Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he burst into tears. As soon as morning came, the chief priests, having made their plan with the elders and lawyers in full council, put Jesus in chains. Then they led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? The word is yours. And the chief priest brought many charges against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you nothing to say in your defense? Do you see how many charges they are bringing against you? But to Pilate's astonishment, Jesus made no further reply. At the festival season, the governor used to release one prisoner at the people's request. As it happened, the man known as Barabbas was then in custody with the rebels who had committed murder in the rising. When the crowd appeared asking for the usual favor, Pilate replied, Do you wish me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he knew it was out of malice that they had brought Jesus before him. But the chief priests incited the crowd to ask him to release Barabbas rather than Jesus. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what shall I do with the man you call king of the Jews? The prisoner I am. What? What harm does he do? But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, in his desire to satisfy the mob, released Barabbas to them, and he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers took him inside the courtyard, the governor's headquarters, and called together the whole company. They dressed him in purple, and plaiting a crown of thorns, placed it on his head. Then they began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! They beat him about the head with a cane and spat upon him, and then knelt and paid mock homage to him. When they had finished their mockery, they stripped him of the purple dress and dressed him in his own clothes. Then they took him out to crucify him. A man called Simon from Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in the, from the country, and they pressed him into service to carry his cross. They brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. He was offered drunk wine, but he would not take it. Then they fastened him to the cross. They divided his clothes among them, 
casting lots to decide what each should have. The hour of crucifixion was nine in the morning, and the inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. Two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. The passers-by hurled abuse at him, wagging their heads. Allah, he was full of mechanical down to you, and built it up three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. So too the chief priests and lawyers jested with one another. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross. If we see that, we shall believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. At midday, a darkness fell over the whole land, which lasted till three in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried aloud, Eli, Eli, lemma, sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders on hearing this said, Lord, he is calling my a man ran and soaked a sponge in sour wine and held it to his lips on the end of a cane. Let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and died. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who was standing opposite him saw how he died, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> 